Hello everyone and a warm welcome. In this lecture, you will get to know sources of infection and about mode of transmission. These are important topics of medical microbiology. So if you are students of microbiology, physiotherapy, biochemistry, public health, MPBS, BDS and nursing, then this lecture is very important for you. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of the new videos. So now get started. First of all, what is transmission? Transmission is the passing of pathogen from an infected individual to a healthy individual or to the groups of individual. These are the potential host and obviously when the pathogen gets spread it can cause a communicable disease. Now what are sources of infection? Sources of infection can be a person, animal, object or substance from which an infectious agent, the pathogen, passes or disseminates to the host. The sources of infection can be classified as exogenous and androgenous sources. Now see what are androgenous. Endo means inside. The pathogen comes from the patient's own body, usually arises from own normal microflora. For example, Staphylococcus and Streptococcus, they form the NMF of the skin, but they can become pathogenic only in certain circumstances. The second type sources are exogenous. These are the sources which are present outside the body. These can be air, water, food, infected cases, inanimate objects. Now let's see what is a case or an infected case and how it can act as a source of infection. Case is the person in a population who is identified to be having a particular disease. The person is having the infection. This infection can be clinical, subclinical or latent. Pathogen leaves the host body of the infected case through the stool, vomiting, coughing, sneezing or via the contact. And these cases, they can be a source of infection as the pathogen leave this case and can enter into a new host. Next source of infection can be the carriers. Now what is a carrier? A carrier is an individual having no overt disease. That means the signs and symptoms are not seen in this person, but this person harbors the pathogen. These are potential sources of infection for the others. Typhoid Mary is a classic example of a carrier. She was carrier for almost 26 years and was responsible for hundreds of cases of typhoid. The carriers can be classified into different types, incubatory, convalescent, healthy or subclinical, temporary and chronic. Now let's see what are these. Incubatory means the patient is in the incubation period. The pathogen is present, it is multiplying but it has not shown the symptoms in the host. For example, measles, mumps, polio pertussis, influenza, diphtheria and hepatitis B. Second type are the convalescent. Here the patient is in the convalescent period. That means the period of recovery. For example, typhoid fever, dysentery, bacillary and amoebic type, cholera, diphtheria and whooping cough. Third type is the healthy or subclinical. Here, 
the patient is in the asymptomatic period of illness the patient is not showing the symptom so these are quite dangerous for the society for example poliomyelitis cholera meningococcal meningitis salmonellosis and diphtheria temporary carriers are those carriers who remain carrier for a short time this can be days or it weeks while chronic carriers are the long time carriers they remain carrier for the months or sometimes for up to years also now what is reservoir reservoir is any person an animal an arthropod a plant soil or a substance or combination of these in which the pathogen lives and multiplies and it can remain alive it can remain potentially active during this period it can reproduce itself in such a manner that sometime it can be transmitted to a susceptible host now we will see what are different modes of transmission they can be classified as direct transmission and indirect transmission direct transmission are further direct contact droplet infection contact with soil inoculation into skin or mucosa transplacental indirect vehicle borne vector borne vector borne can be mechanical and biological air borne fomite borne unclean hands and fingers now further we are discussing the sources again and side by side we are having the mode of transmission also so the first source is the skin discharges and the mode of transmission is via contact pathogen is present in the skin or it is getting discharged from the patient from the body fluids or from the eyes here so pathogen is transmitted through contaminated hands clothes domestic flies or any other material which is contaminated for example conjunctivitis trachoma yaws scabies stds sexually transmitted diseases also come under this category these are transmitted via the discharges from the genitals or through the contact with the genitals next source is food or water and mode of transmission is ingestion the pathogen contaminates food or water the pathogen has been shed from the infected person or a carrier who was harboring the pathogen and transmission is the fecal oral transmission the pathogen has shed in the feces and from the feces the pathogen can enter either into the food or the water and when that food or water is ingested then there can be the infection example of food borne diseases are salmonellosis dysentery and certain kind of the food poisoning the water borne diseases are cholera and typhoid then there can be some diseases which are hand or finger borne these diseases are transmitted when the personnel who are cooking the food or serving the food they are having the pathogen on their hands house flies they are also responsible for the food borne and the water borne infections when they contaminate the food or the water next source is the air aerosols and the mode of transmission is inhalation aerosols these are the fine droplets also called the droplet nuclei they are very small in size they can be as small as 1 mm and they remain suspended in the air for a long time these aerosols may be inhaled by a susceptible host or they can get deposited onto the mucosal membranes or on the environmental surfaces aerosols they are produced when a person breathes coughs sneezes or speaks the person is the infected person 
and they can also be produced during certain medical procedures like suctioning, bronchoscopy, dentistry, inhalation or anesthesia. The examples of the pathogens who are transmitted via the aerosols are the Mauritella, Bronchiseptica, Canine Influenza, Canine Distemper Virus, Number of respiratory tract infection, they are caused because of the inhalation of the aerosols. For example, tuberculosis, SARS, COVID-19. Next are the vectors. They can be source of the infection and the mode is the inoculation. Now, what are vectors? Vectors are the orthoprods. They can be insects, ticks or mites which can transmit the infection from host to the another host, from infected person to the healthy person. The animal host usually they are reservoir of such kind of the infection. Example, yellow fever, malaria, sleeping sickness, plague, epidemic louse born typhus fever and louse born relapsed fever. The vectors can be classified as the mechanical vectors and the biological vectors. Mechanical vectors are only transmitting the pathogen. The pathogen is not getting altered inside these vectors. For example, housefly. While the biological vectors are the vectors in which a part of life cycle of the pathogen is completed in the vector itself. For example, Female Anopheles mosquito is the biological vector for the protozoa Plasmodium vivax which causes the malaria fever. Next sources are the animals and the mode of transmission is the zoonotic transmission. Here animals are involved in transmission. The agent which is the pathogenic agent gets transferred from the animals to the human beings to the potential sources. The example of zoonotic pathogens are Microsporum, Leptospira, Campylobacter and Bartonella. These animals either they can bite the host or these animals they can liberate the pathogen in the air or the animal product when that is ingested then there can be the infection in the human host. Next source is the soil. In soil, certain microorganisms, they are always present. They are called saprophytes. But saprophytes, they thrive on the dead and decaying water or the organic matter. And they cause infection only in those individuals who are immunocompromised. Otherwise, in the soil, the patients and the carriers, they also shed the pathogen and the soil becomes contaminated. The soil can contaminate the agriculture produce or from the soil the pathogen can enter into the food items or into the water. Next sources are the fomites. What are fomites? So fomites are the inanimate objects which can become contaminated by an individual who is infected. When these objects they come in contact with a susceptible animal or the human. There are wide variety of fomites. They can be the tables, they can be the cages, canals, medical equipment, environmental surfaces and the clothing. For example, the chewing of pencil by infected kids in nursery schools can transmit a bacteria which is Coronibacterium diphtheriae, the causative agent of diphtheria. Next sources of infection can be the parents and these infections which are transmitted from the parents to the offsprings these are called the congenital infections and the mode is called the congenital transmission or the vertical mode. Mother can transmit to the infection to the offspring usually for example the torch toxoplasmosis rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex virus and some other pathogens. The infection can be transmitted from the mother to the offspring in three manner prenatal means before the birth. The example is rubella virus which can cross the placenta and cause the infection in the 
fetus next is perinatal perinatal means during the birth when the infant the newborn is passing through the birth canal example of the pathogens which can be transmitted in this manner are the chlamydia trachomatis and the disease gonorrhea the causative agent is neisseria gonorrhoe third is the postnatal postnatal means after the birth example are the cytomegalovirus hiv human immunodeficiency virus hepatitis b and hepatitis c rarely father can also transmit the infection to the offspring through the sperms when the dna of the sperm is infected that can be with the hiv virus or the htlv virus all this transmission which are from the parents to the offspring are classified under the vertical mode of transmission next the animal bites needles etc they can also cause the infection they can also be sources and the mode of transmission is inoculation the inoculation of pathogen directly into the blood stream it can be following the animal bite the needles the surgical tools etc the infections which are because of the needles or surgical tools these are also called the iatrogenic infection examples of iatrogenic infections are rabies hepatitis b and rabies sorry the aids and hepatitis b and rabies is an infection which is transmitted by the bite of the rabid animals thanks for watching and best wishes by intake